So how's it going guys? So today Infinity Ward hosted a live stream where they did a lot of new information on Raven the Redwoods. They revealed a uh, reveal trailer, obviously. They also did the intro cinematics for it, as well as uh, giving us some more information and uh, showing us the poster and the map layout too. So it's really cool they've went ahead and released all this information. So I just want to make this video to go over the new information that we have. Well, this is just going to be a general uh, overview of some things that I noticed within the trailers, uh, within the posters, and things along those lines. So first off, let's take a look at the poster. Uh, Lee Ross has been hinting at this for a while on Twitter now. First, we got an image of the credits, and uh, a few days ago, or about a week or so ago, we got uh, the image of the Slasher's uh, welder mask. Um, so it's really cool to finally have the full high-res image of it. Uh, you'll see the slasher in the background with our four characters with their new personas that they're taking on within Raven the Redwoods, as well as the always awesome Kevin Smith. If you look down here at the credits, you'll see it says with Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes. If you're not familiar with Kevin Smith or Jason Mewes, then I suggest you go and watch Jay and Silent Bob because that is where they are most commonly known by. I really hope Infinity Ward have included jungle love by the time since they have both of these characters in here if they don't then that's a missed opportunity and i'd be pretty sad if they didn't um so if you guys aren't familiar with that reference again go watch jay and silent bob take a quick look real fast here at the map layout it's nice that we have this already we spawn here in Bear Lodge and we actually start out with no weapons at all and zombies are already coming after us so we'll be starting out with our bare fist no pun intended and uh, we'll have to find some means of defense nearby. I think also with it being this map, uh, we're going to have those melee weapons that they've been heavily advertising and, and pushing for uh, pretty much within the spawn room. So I think we'll be able to pick them up much like we did with like the shovel and uh, stuff within Origins. I think those things are already going to be around us, if not within a door or two. They did a great job at capturing sort of the layout of a campgrounds. Uh, this is definitely something that you would see if you went to a camp. Uh, even even down to the art style. It's really cool that they did this. Um, I like that they've gone with sort of the classic way of naming each area of the camp. A lot of uh, camps would do either like tribe names or in this case animals uh, and that definitely works for this. So with these uh, icon tokens I think it's going to be very similar to uh, Zombies in Spaceland. Uh, we're probably going to be linking them together in some sort of way in order to get uh, Pack-a-Punch open. Or, since we are in a summer camp, we could possibly be getting stuff like badges. So I think that would be a cool way to incorporate uh, challenges or time trials, something along those lines like we've had in the past. As far as the rave itself goes, uh, that's probably going to be taking place here in the recreational area of the map. That seems to be a wide open place, so more than likely that is where the rave would be stationed. I'm very curious to see what's going on in the old Marvin mine. Uh, I think that's going to play a key role in some sort of main easter egg. Also later on you'll see the slasher kind of evolves and gets larger. I think that may have something to do with something that's going on in the mine, much like element 115. Um, so I think we could be getting something that alters the zombies and things that enter in the mine or uh, something else that affects the zombies as well as the players. So I think that's what's going to be happening within the mine or the surrounding area. You know, the docks, you have these two red canoes. Uh, those definitely scream to me uh, some sort of transportation mode, as well as Turtle Island kind of being off in the distance. Uh, as far as maps go, you really can't get a good sense of scale, so we don't know exactly how far away it is from the docks. So that could be transportation to the island, and it could be something along the lines of Mob of the Dead. I don't think it's necessarily going to lead to a pack-a-punch. I think it could be just maybe like a challenge island or um, things things along that line so we'll have to wait and see on that one and then you have a little dock out in the middle of the water and uh, i'll show you what happens to that here in a little bit too that wraps up the map coverage so let's go ahead and move into the reveal trailer first off the main thing that jumps out to me here is this giant bat and while it being pretty far in the distance it looks huge and I think what this could be is potentially a leads toward uh, the next map. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar, uh, there are yetis in this map. Um, there is also a heavy influence of yetis or ice monsters within Spaceland. So I think they were hinting at the next map potentially having yeti monsters, which of course it does. So we could be getting something like that. Um, but that, that, that bird or bat is, is massive. 
But we get a look at our cabins here. So this is gonna be the bunk houses. Nothing too big screams out to me there. We got a mystery box there in the background. Nothing too important. Gotta look at some of our zombies there and they go with the standard classic crappy invert 90s effect to make something look scary. Now we get a look at our four characters here in game with their new personas and their melee weapons. We got Andre with a double sided axe. We got Sally with a baseball bat with nails in it. AJ with a machete and Poindexter with a golf club. More zombies coming out, and then we get a nice little intro of the characters. We get a pretty cool panning shot here of just some zombie destruction. And then this part here really took me by surprise. This is a very, very dark, dark turn. I'm not sure if this is going to be some sort of new... Um, you know ticket system or badge system definitely could be playing on things like tickets and tokens or badges whatever may happen within this map we have an archery range we have an obstacle course we have a wall to climb and it looks here like we have a throwing knife uh thing so this could be where we earn tickets tokens or whatever in order to buy stuff or upgrade things here we get a look at three of the new melee weapons in use by our characters pretty sweet really digging that double-sided axe and then we get a look here at the docks and if you look right here that perk in the background i went in checked zombies in space land and i could not find anything that matches that neon and that animation of sort of a waving effect so i think that could possibly be a brand new perk there on the dock so that would be cool and interesting to see what exactly it is and then we got zombies entering in the water while we're on this platform. So as I was saying earlier, there's this area that we can stand on. So it's really cool. And I think an awesome addition to this is piranhas. These piranhas are devouring these zombies as they're in the water. So it's pretty cool. I think this is going to be similar to the alligator trap within zombies in space land where it's not going to be a, you don't activate it by buying it. Uh, it's activated just by stepping on it. Um, in this case, I think it's going to be a time thing, kind of like call of the dead where while you're standing in the water you start freezing i think this will also damage the players as you're standing in the water you'll start getting bit by piranhas and you can potentially die by them so it's a cool little addition in there so we'll see how well that works so now we get our first look at the yeti monsters and these things look awesome i'm really excited at first i thought they were werewolves they actually look that way in the movements but seeing him stand on his back two legs and charging at the players this thing looks quite terrifying and I'm excited to see what he can do with it. These are going to replace the clowns and these are definitely more scary and terrifying to me than clowns and uh, they don't explode so that'll be nice but I'm, I'm excited to see what they can do and what we can do with them. So coming up here in a second you'll see our characters activate a trap and many of you will recognize this trap as the iconic flogger from Shinonuma. Uh, it's nice to see a lot of references to past Treyarch games. We have the, uh, the Shinonuma trap. We also have the swampy areas. Um, so it's kind of cool. There's also one more nod. There's a zip line later on. So as our characters approach this bonfire here, they begin to start seeing neon colors everywhere. Obviously influenced by hallucinogens. So this is definitely going to be playing on that. I think this is definitely going to be something that is going to be a timed event, kind of like the afterlife mode or very similar to the sunglasses within uh, Zombies in Spaceland uh, without without being able to equip or unequip them. I think it's going to be a timed event. Uh, otherwise, it would be very disorienting to constantly wear that. And as Lee Ross stated within the stream, upon going into rave mode, the slasher then comes in to cause chaos. And if we take a look here, it actually looks like our characters are able to become or at least equip the slash weapon and what appears to be his mask because this is obviously a limited HUD so it would be pretty cool maybe that'll be sort of our specialist abilities that we have and then we get our look at our slasher inside of rave mode and I gotta say this dude looks awesome I love the design on him he looks terrifying and awesome at the same time and I gotta say they did a great job at captivating something that would be horrifying to see and intimidating because the fact that he runs his saw along his own welder's helmet just it seems like something straight out of a horror movie that they would do to intimidate 
any and everyone around them because you're like, that dude's crazy, I'm running the other way. A look here at someone activating what appears to be the DJ station of the rave. It's probably going to function similar to the disco floor within Zombies in Spaceland, where it activates kind of like a monkey bomb or a boombox trap and then eventually explodes. The then we got our characters again on the zip line. So, again, more nods to Shino Numa. We have our character within rave mode, and you can see the zombies with the really cool neon body paint. And again, this, this definitely screams out to me a limited. Uh, timed event just because the HUD around it is very disorienting it would be very hard to play an entire game like that um, so I think it is definitely going to be a timed event and it will play into an easter egg in some way just because you will have a certain amount of time to complete a task within that mode you can see that our characters are back within the movie theater and using their standard pack-a-punch and you can see too that the alien fuses are not installed on this one so I think if you've completed the easter egg the alien fuses will be in there and if you did not it won't be however we'll have to wait and see but it looks like pack-a-punch is definitely going to be cross map uh which is pretty cool i'm excited because that means potentially every time we complete an easter egg we could go back and change different weapon upgrades and upgrade them multiple times and add different effects so that would be pretty cool to incorporate you know multiple pack-a-punch abilities from all the different maps and go back and play maps we've already played before. So that's a very cool effect. Take a look here at our new crossbow gun and this thing looks awesome. It's Pack-A-Punch here and it does an explosive slash lightning electrical effect and this thing looks like it demolishes any and everything around it. Some more standard zombie killing here with some explosions. This area right here just I, I love how this looks. It looks great and it, it looks crazy. This giant statue with all the neon lights and speakers. It looks really cool and I'm super excited for this map. We got our characters running away from zombies and they're passing up what appears to be a wood chipper and I really hope that this thing is a trap. Then we get our look at a mutated slasher here and this dude is massive. He does a jumping effect. It looks like the ground is uh, glowing, just showing where he's going to land. So it will probably down you, kind of like the brute slam. Um, so you'll have to be running from him and avoiding the areas that he's going to be jumping in. I know a lot of people weren't a fan of the brute. I personally don't mind him. And I'm excited to see uh, what the slasher can do and what all we can do with the slasher. Yeah, that's pretty much Rave in the Redwoods. Other than one more important thing, and that is the always awesome Kevin Smith making his appearance in here. And of course, he's in a hockey jersey. So that kind of covers the reveal trailer and the things that I've noticed in there. Uh, so now we'll go ahead and jump into the intro cinematic cutscene. So we kind of recap on the events of Zombies in Spaceland very briefly. This them arriving to the theater, getting pulled in, and everything happening. And then finally, we get to see them destroying the UFO, picking up the soul key, and being sucked out of Zombies in Spaceland and Willard Wyler being upset, but also stating that the rave will consume them, basically. This is, to me, a little too little too late. Uh, this would have been nice to have months ago. I, Zombies in Spaceland felt a little flat here over the last month or so. Um, you know, it's, it's been very stagnant. So this would have been nice if they have patched it in sooner. Even this small little tidbit of information, um, kind of like with Govard Krovi, we got a nice little teaser for Revelations. It would have been nice to have this, you know, 30... 30 second clip at the end of Zombies in Spaceland after we completed Easter Egg and after we go down. We don't need an end game. However, this would have been nice. But at the same time, it's good that they actually listen to the community as far as like, hey, can we get a cutscene? Really, a lot of us would like it. So it's nice that they're doing this. And then we get an intro into Rave in the Redwoods. So here we see all the kids raving away, just having a having a blast here. I gotta be honest too, I wasn't at first on board with these. I guess you can say Scooby-Doo animations. That is the best way to describe it. Uh, however, it, it's sort of grown on me at the same time. It still doesn't fit what I would like to see. I would like to see more cinematic stuff. But at the same time, it has a very dark, really like terrifying feel to it because it's this cartoony uh, cutscene. But at the same time, it's very dark and it is it's very vivid and people are dying, getting mutilated and eaten. And it is... You know, it, it's very a, a big contrast to standard cartoons. So I, I, I've grown to actually not mind it so much. So our characters then arrive into the main bear cabin lodge. I really like that they're playing on the fact that these characters are being forcefully given a persona that they have to take on regardless of if they want to or not. So it's good to see that they're going to be taking on different roles in different maps. So it'll be cool to see what all they plan on doing. 
since we aren't in that demented theme park anymore. Yo, shut up, hey. I heard something. Listen. Oh, shit, man. We got zombies again. You have got to be kidding me, man. And then, of course, we get zombies tapping on the window and we fade to black. And that's really about it right now. Until we get the map that releases on the 31st, that's really all we have to go off of. We may get some more teaser information and little uh, tidbits of information here and there from Lee Ross or Brian Bright on Twitter, so make sure you guys follow them on there. I'll be doing detailed coverage guides for Raven the Redwoods from the initial release on until we figure almost everything out about it. I'll also be doing, again, strategy guides, uh, any sort of buildable stuff that comes out with it, so I'll be sure to have coverage. As soon as I make the videos, they will be up. They're not going to be like my normal... Uh, uh, release schedule those are going to be released upon you know as soon as i find something out or as soon as we progress any further on stuff there'll be updates so those things will be um, put out all the time uh, as soon as i finish the videos so the upload schedule will probably be a little chaotic you guys will probably be seeing several uploads in the middle of days that i already have uploads so i just want to make you guys aware of that i hope you guys are just as excited for raven the redwoods as i am i'm super amped about it so if you guys noticed anything in any of the information that we got today or in the past few weeks or so um, please be sure to leave that down in the comment section below i would love to see it i'm probably not going to make a follow-up video on this unless we get some like major information or another new video uh comes out uh, this is probably going to be the only sort of lead up to Raven and the Redwoods that I have other than a special video that I'm, I'm working on right now. Um, but yeah, that really concludes this video. So thank you guys so much for watching and all the support. I hope you have a great day and I will see you guys soon.